Morning all. So it turns out it's a light news day today because it's Christmas when I'm recording this. So I wanted to do a top 10 stories from the National Hockey League over the 2020 year. And even though we only had hockey for what, four months of the entire calendar year, there's been a number of big stories. So there's some honorable mentions in here. Uh, Dallas, they run to the Stanley Cup Finals. And I picked this to wear because it seems festive and snowy and white and very, very white. Um, it's either this or Detroit. Um, so, stars to the finals. Uh, Thatcher Demko coming in, uh, doing yeoman's work for the Canucks against Vegas. Um, the remote draft gets an honorable mention. Uh, Taylor Hall, Eric Stahl to the Sabres. The Sabres revamp. Uh, the reverse retro jerseys and all of the craziness that uh, we've seen in terms of just the, the, the buying. And, and I'm not the only one that's bought a bunch of them. And rightfully so they're they're pretty fantastic um and and we also needed something to distract us from 2020 uh, the canucks to calgary as in the the flames picking up markstrom and picking up tanev and picking up levo and so yeah uh it's a pretty large portion of the canucks heart it would seem going to calgary we'll see how that works out for them uh tuka rask heading home out of the bubble um, going home to be with his, his family rather than staying in the in the bubble, but we'll get to that. Uh, Petrangelo going to uh, Vegas uh, gets an honorable mention. And for me, offside being fixed is going to be, I think, a bigger story in 2021. The fact that your skate doesn't have to be touching the ice now on the blue line in order to qualify as onside, to me, is, is huge. So... And some of these some of these stories are, are going to involve other stories as well. So number ten. Number ten is the fact the NHL has announced a January thirteenth start date for the season in twenty twenty one. And I think that's that's pretty big news and so to me that gets into the top 10 and yet the fact that announcing when the season starts is number 10 tells you just how crammed full of news this year was not all of it great number nine uh leon dreisaitl's entire year so all the awards he's won and and just how dominant he looked this year absolutely to me gets him into the top 10 and there aren't other award winners in the top 10 because for me this year was kind of kind of chock full and there's going to be a couple of things on this board you go right that 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 was this year feels like it was ages ago but yeah dry had a fantastic year we'll see how he follows it up this season number eight and, and honestly, this one shouldn't have been as big a story as it was, but it just kept going and going and going. So we'll go ahead and say that Leonard, Leonard's the starter was the storyline because Fleury has this really strong connection with Vegas fans, with the city, and then Fleury's agent made it worse with the whole stabbed in the back picture that he was posting on online. And so this storyline just kept going and going and going. And it was weird because Leonard's numbers were fantastic, but you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know it by looking at, at the, the online reactions to Leonard still being the starter. So the fact that, that Leonard was the starter, um, huge storyline for Vegas. And Vegas continues to be a storyline all in and of themselves. This uh, expansion team of two years ago, which didn't act like an expansion team, still doesn't. They're still trying to contend for a Stanley Cup. It's fascinating. It's nothing that I've seen in my lifetime. Uh, number seven. David Ayers. Yep. The Toronto Maple Leafs lost to the emergency backup goalie, to a guy who is a Zamboni driver. Uh, David Ayers, the entire story, and what makes it a, a huge story as well is, is the media reaction. So it's not just like it was this really good feel, you know, feel good moment. It was that we heard guys like Brian Burke coming out. This is an embarrassment to the game. This is a terrible thing. And 
you know, it, it just, just railing about how horrible this was and what an awful thing this was to see happen. And personally, I, I, I thought that was a little bit harsh and a little bit over the top. Uh, I thought it was a good story. I think it happens so rarely that we see an emergency backup goaltender that I don't think it's a big deal. But there were those that, that thought it was a, a, a big deal. Not in, in that, I mean, the story of him playing was a big deal, but people made a bigger deal out of, he shouldn't have been in there than they really should have. Number six. Draft lottery. Now, what made the draft lottery a little bit more... Um, attention worthy than normal was the fact that we didn't have a normal regular season or a normal playoff setup and so when the rangers lost a play-in round and then won round two of the draft lottery keep in mind they had two rounds of a draft lottery and so the rangers winning it uh it was it was shall we say controversial i didn't think it was that big a deal because it's not like the rangers were fantastic last year and it's not like the Rangers weren't going through a retool anyways. But, again, it upset some people. And, of course, Lafreniere gets drafted by them. We'll see him as soon as this year. And we'll see what he's able to do at the NHL level. Number five. To me, Tampa winning the Cup is the fifth biggest news item. Think about this for a second. This was the team that got swept in round one last year. And in 2020, they win the Stanley Cup. And I think that's worthy of fifth on the board in terms of the biggest news stories of the year because there were some much bigger news stories than what was going on on the ice. Also included in this is the play in the bubble, the fact that players took six, eight weeks away from their families to go in and settle this and figure out a cup winner. And it was... It was you know, pretty big deal that the NHL was able to finish the season. Number four. So when when Seattle was, was awarded a team, it took them almost two years to come up with a name. And it was getting to the point where uh, we, we were making jokes about them skating around the ice in blank jerseys, sort of like this, but minus the logo. And, and so... When they finally announced their name, when they finally came out as the Kraken, most of us were just relieved we had a name. And then, of course, there were those that were enraged with the logo or enraged with the name or just people that find some reason to be upset about everything. Wouldn't have mattered what they called themselves. They have a name, and I would think the one of the biggest stories next year will be the expansion draft, who they take and who they don't. And the kind of season they start off to. Number three. Now, what's interesting is the top three items are all related. And I thought about, you know, well, maybe maybe I can put them all together. But I can't because they all have different ramifications. The flat salary cap that we're now looking at, and this flat salary cap is going to be a news item for years to come, has changed the economic scenery in the National Hockey League completely uh long-term extensions harder to get the big money contracts much harder to get teams are losing money players are giving up money in in escrow and deferrals and the salary cap is going to stay flat for at least the next two years it could be longer this is something that could affect younger players for years to come so the flat salary cap will be a news item for for quite some time and it is it is definitely related to the top two on here the flat cap was in part a result of cba extension so the collective bargaining agreement was running out right and so before this past season even got started there was talk about hey there's the opt-out we may not get a season there were a lot of cash bonuses being paid to players because cash bonuses are guaranteed even during a lockout. And so players were already making sure as much of their money as possible was being paid up front in cash bonuses, the signing bonuses, because they figured the league was going to shut down. We are so, so conditioned for lockouts and, 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 and strife that we just expect it. And so players were kind of going, okay, well, I want to get paid 2019, 2020, because that's when we think we're going to have a lockout. 
So I'll make sure that that year is bonus money because that's guaranteed. And the CBA extension was in part necessitated by what we're going through right now. It was in part necessitated by all of this going on around us. And and yet, I don't, I don't care about that as much as I care about the fact that we have labor peace for years to come. It may sound like squabbling when it comes to the flat cap and deferrals and all that every year, but it feels like we'll get things done and we'll avoid any kind of a shutdown. And yet, the odd thing about that is, it's been a long year, and and the number one news article news article from this year is March twelfth, better known as the pause. So Rudy Gobert, you know, has a little bit of fun with the press and grabs a bunch of microphones, and then it turns out he tests positive for COVID. And March 12th, uh, the sporting world as we knew it shut down. And everything changed in North America. That pause in part leads to the CBA extension. The economic fallout of that has led to the flat cap. And it has led to a draft lottery that was held in a manner never held before. That led to that remote draft. That led to the bubble scenario in Edmonton and Toronto, which led to Tampa Bay winning the trophy. When the Kraken named their team, they didn't have some big, you know, city gathering and some big festival to announce the name. It was just, here's the name. Here's a watch party online. Everything being done online. So the the top six news items here are all related to number one. And so it pushes down the feel-good story of, of David Ayers. The Robin Leonard, you know, he's the starter, not Flurry storyline. Dreisaitl having an amazing year. And related to this as well is number 10, which is the January 13th start. We should be, right now, almost four months into a season. Let's see, October, November, December. Okay, three months into the season. We, I, months are years and years are decades now, and I, I don't, it doesn't matter. But we should be three months into a season right now. We should be having debates regularly about who is the true Stanley Cup champion, which team's overachieving, and which team's underachieving, which players off to the slow starts that are going to bounce back, and which one's off to a really fast start and they're not going to be able to keep it up. The reality is, all of it comes back to this. So that is the biggest news story of 2020. And you know what I'm looking forward to in 2021? I'm looking forward to hopefully not having pauses to talk about, hopefully having really good economic news to talk about, maybe a bigger bounce back for the NHL than we expect, maybe the helmet ads and whatever other advertising revenues they're able to find, maybe it deals with the flat cap situation. And I'd, I'd love to be able to do videos from other locations. So here's to hoping I'm able to get some traveling in in 2021. And yeah, so hopefully everybody has a, a, a safe, wonderful holiday. Uh, one which, as I said, I'm recording this on Christmas Day. So hopefully you have yourself a, a wonderful Christmas and a, a really good New Year as well. And hopefully next year's top 10 stories are, are happy ones. And they're ones that we can have debates about. And number one, won't have anything to do with pausing things and, and everything kind of kind of changing. Uh, but hey, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And it is weird to have top 10 stories and none of them are free agent signings. None of them is a big trade. Strange. All right. Thank you guys for all your support throughout the year. I will talk to you again soon.